I am Silas Silas Brown, and you're listening to my creamy voice. A young white girl sits atop a smelly wet stump in a dark blue forest. Nothing but trees for miles surround her in every direction. Rain falls heavily like bullets from God's kingdom above. As they ricochet off her shiny pink poncho, liquid fecal matter slithers down her right leg like a snake. She's frightened and alone. The sense of abandonment overwhelms her as her parents fornicate in Paris with rubber toys. She hears growling and imagines hungry wolves waiting for her to move so they can pounce, though there are none. It's simply her active imagination. She stays very still as tears pour from her eyes and her heart thumps like a bongo drum played by a coked out caveman. A figure steps out from behind a tree. Her bongo heart beats faster. It is I, Silas Brown, come to rescue her. Well, Actually, I was simply doing my nightly bird watching, but when I see a lost girl in the woods, that becomes priority. Hello, little girl, I say to her. She doesn't answer. Don't be rude. I said hello. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Goodness, your generation, I tell ya. Anyways, my name is Silas, Silas Brown. Are you an explorer? Hmm? You strike me as an explorer. Wait. My God, you're deaf, aren't you? That explains it. Not rude, just deaf. Of course. A deaf explorer here in the dark woods. I bet you can see a hell of a lot better than I can, what with your enhanced night vision. Here, come off that stump and help spot some birds with me. I reach out my hand to her. She runs. Well, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Oh, you're getting a phone call here. <laughs> Hold on, gotta take this. Uh. Hello? Silas, please don't be mad. Brennan, you're late. Yes, okay. Hear me out. Hmm, okay. There was a bear on oh. Highway 16. Oh, there was a bear. Was there? Mm. Yeah, there was. Okay, mm-hmm. that, so yeah. I'm on my way, mm-hmm. but I, I had to stop because of the bear. Because of the bear, yes. Okay, what kind of bear? It was one of the black bears. Oh, black bear. Those are very common around these parts. <sighs> And well, did you get a picture of it? No, okay, I couldn't take a picture uh, because my phone was only at 14% and I had it off oh, at the time because mm-hmm. I was trying to preserve the battery. Oh, but you're talking to me now, so it must be on. Yeah, I, it's on now, mm-hmm. and I'm running out. I, it's almost dead, honestly. i got to hang up. Good idea. But, uh, I'm on my way. Okay. Well, listen, we already started the podcast. What? Yeah, it's going swimmingly, actually. We're supposed to start it together. Well, that's too bad. You snooze, you lose. But when you get here... Whatever, I'll be there. You will continue when you get here. Uh, Well, all right. That was our producer, Bren. Bren is the brains behind the technical aspect of the show, I guess. You know, he's in charge of editing, slicing, uploading, and... Basically getting this podcast up and running, which I was able to do myself today, so I don't really know why I'm paying him. No. Anyways, I think I'm going to interview him when he gets here. Yeah, definitely definitely going to interview him. I'm curious to see how that brain operates. B. 
because let's be honest, he's a little off. Yeah, something's not quite right <laughs> in that head. We'll get to the bottom of it, uh, but first I'm going to go move my bowels. You know, an old man wearing his mother's antique earrings was sitting next to me on the trolley yesterday. I knew they were his mother's because three stops after he got on, she boarded, all sweaty and frantic, as if she had been chasing after the trolley for quite some time. She stepped up to her son, hand with a grocery bag in it, full of cans, chunky tomato soup, I presume, and possibly some cat food as well. She started beating the life out of him. Just crazy. He was all bloody and crying on the floor of the trolley. She leaned down, ripped her earrings from his ears, and spit a large brown wad of goo in his face. Called him a thieving schmushka, I believe, which is Yiddish for pussy. And then she just exited the trolley. Everyone was stunned. I mean, we didn't see that coming. It's not every day that happens, you know. But it was definitely entertaining. I was licking an ice cream cone at the time. Butterscotch with sprinkles. Mmm, creamy. Silas? Yes? Mr. Hastings is on his way up. Okay, thanks, Belinda. Another coffee, please? Okay, Silas. <laughs> Adorable. You know, there was a woman named Edith whom I used to psychoanalyze from time to time, and Edith would make her own ice cream in the foyer of her beachside villa, which I always thought perplexing. I mean, why clutter your foyer with ice cream making equipment? I mean, aren't you concerned about your guests tripping over things? Anyway, she would give me some of her ice cream at the end of each of our sessions, which Darling intentions, don't get me wrong. I mean, what an angel. But if I'm being honest, it was quite frustrating because the ice cream would always be melted by the time I got around to eating it. Our sessions would go on for three, four, sometimes even five hours. And it boggles my mind. You know, I mean, why didn't it occur to her to just give me the ice cream at the beginning? That way I could have eaten it as she unloaded her problems onto me. Am I a bad person for thinking this way? Is this what it's going to be? Just, just you telling pointless stories like this? Or what's going on? For those just tuning in, our producer Bren has arrived. Say hello, Bren. Hi. Sorry again for being late. Don't worry about it. You're forgiven. By the way, it wasn't a pointless story I was telling. Cause I didn't even get to the good part, so... Oh, my apologies. Please, continue. I will continue. Now, Edith revealed to me at around our 11th session that she had produced the ice cream using milk which was pumped from her own breast <coughs> when she was 30. What the fuck? Now, mind you, Edith was 83 at the time of her sessions, so <sighs> she had to buy multiple freezers to store all of the gallons for, let's do the math, about, about 53 years. Yeah. Are these the type of stories you told your wife, Silas? Is, is that why she left you? Oh, ha, very funny. Folks, guess what? We have a comedian in the room. Well, someone's gotta be. You know, this is a serious podcast where we talk about real issues, okay? You're fucking kidding me. Are you serious? Real issues. Real issues? Yes, Brennan. Real issues. Okay? And I'd like to get to the bottom of your real issues, so I'm going to ask you some questions. But first, we're going to take a quick commercial break for our sponsors. What? We don't have any sponsors! Do you need a new muleta because your old muleta is worn out? Muleta is a small red cloth fixed to a stick used to guide the bull during a fight. But you knew that. And you could find a new muleta at Sings.es. Sings.es. Guide that bull. So you said you wanted to ask me some questions? I would love to ask you some questions. Alright, shoot. Okay, well, we'll start with a serious question. Do you know how strange you are? <laughs> what? I mean, you're a very bizarre person, quite odd. 
Are you aware of this, or do you just think you're normal like all of us? Coming from the guy who wears the same turtleneck blazer combo every day. Brennan, you know damn well why I wear this turtleneck. Yeah, and you know that we're all a little strange, and there's nothing wrong with that, so... Isn't that just something that strange people say? You know, the first time you met me, do you remember this? I went to shake your hand, and you threw a cup of coffee in my face. Now, that's not a normal way to greet someone. You know what, Brent? I feel like you intentionally left a lot of details out of that story that were pertinent to the plot to make me sound bad in front of my listeners, and that upsets me. Boys, no fighting, get along with each other. You know what? She's right. Moving on. You know, I'm glad we have her. I was getting a little worried there. I bet you were. Next question. This one's a little bit easier. What's the last thing that you ate? I had uh, some white long grain rice, which I steamed with uh, some cut up chicken, chorizo sausage, some Mexican sour cream, buffalo sauce, spinach, four eggs, uh, some garlic seasoning, black pepper, and uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. Mmm, guess what? What? No one cares. Now, back to the short story I was telling earlier about the little girl lost in the dark woods. Dick. This isn't right. I must go after her. There could be predators lurking. I would hate to wake up and see something terrible on the news that I could have prevented. I believe it was Paulo Coelho who once said that life was always a matter of waiting for the right moment to act. Perhaps this is my moment. I begin to run. The wet, muddy twigs condense with every leap, creating prints, securing my presence into the history of the forest floor. Here ran a hero, wearing a wine-red turtleneck, which at this moment was wet enough to hydrate family of cowboys. My eyes aren't as good as the deaf girl's, so I rip some clumped-up moss from a log and shove them in my ears to superpower my vision. My head pivots in all directions, searching and searching for a bright pink poncho. There's no sign of her. I begin to lose hope. But wait! I remember! It's President's Day! Meaning that by law, I get to be president for a day. So, using my presidential power, I, President Brown, here now declare the lost little girl in the dark blue forest officially founded. I shout this phrase out into the world three times loud. I close my eyes tight, real tight, for about seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. I open them. Wa freaking la! Not an arm's length in front of me stands this little girl wearing her bright pink poncho. Tracks of tears down her face from all the crying. Or perhaps the rain. Well, probably both. But she trusts me, it looks like. I reach up my hand again to her. She takes it. As the sun begins to rise, the two of us, together, walk out of the forest, into the bright orange meadow. She looks up at me with a smile. My name's Matilda, and I'm not deaf. I'm not deaf. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna leave. Wait, what? Already? Yeah, no. I mean, you don't. You don't need me. Sounds like you got this thing under control. So. Uh, but I didn't even finish interviewing you. There's more questions. Okay, no, we'll do that next time. I, I'm. I'm but, good for now. I'm gonna go home. Uh, Red. I want to leave on a. On a happy note. That was a nice ending. 
Nice, nice little storybook ending right there. But you so. didn't even hear the whole story. You weren't here for the beginning of it. You were late. I didn't need to. Yeah, I didn't need to. It was, it was perfect. Uh, so, you know. Huh? Okay, all right, I guess. Um, hey, do me a favor. On your way out, would you ask Belinda to bring me another coffee? Yep, you got it, man. No problem. Hey. Mm. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll be here for the next one. Muletta, muletta, where's that muletta? The dog ate it cause you neglected to pet her. Now instead of fighting the bull, you've got to fight your dog. Don't fight your dog. Get a new muletta at Zing's Daddy Yes. Zing's Daddy Yes for all your muletta needs. Guide that bull. Now for some facts about coffee. A third of all the tap water Americans drink is first brewed into coffee. A cup of coffee contains more antioxidants than a cup of grape juice. Coffee and Homo sapiens evolved within 250 miles of each other. Coffee reduces two types of diabetes, Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Coffee was discovered when shepherds noticed their goats were dancing. Four to five Americans start their day with a cup of coffee. In 17th century England, women were forbidden to drink coffee in public places. In the 16th century, Muslim and Christian leaders tried to ban coffee drinking. Johann Sebastian Bach wrote a cantata inspired by coffee addiction. Men who drink six or more cups of coffee a day have 20% less prostate cancer. One of the earliest uses of coffee was to produce ecstatic religious visions. The average adult in Finland consumes four to five cups of coffee every day. The coffee industry employs approximately 25 million people, mostly farmers. The inventor of instant coffee was named George Washington and had no relation to President George Washington. The largest cup brewed was 3,700 gallons or roughly 60,000 regular cups. So you're probably wondering, Silas, what happened to the man on the trolley? The one with the earrings? And what about his mother? Well, all I can tell you for certain is this. Clearly him and his mother are not in a good place right now. But I can say this. In time, the memories of that terrible incident will fade. Just like in time, all of the people affected by the incident will cease to exist. And the memories of us will fade. And then, in time, the people holding those memories will cease to exist. And all the memories of them will fade. And then the people holding those memories will cease to exist. Just like in time, your memory of this podcast will fade and you will cease to exist. And all of the people who ever listen to this will cease to exist as well. So I guess you can say, nothing really matters. Go ahead and check out the Silas Brown Saga on YouTube, chapters 1 through 22. Also give me a follow on Twitter at Silas Brown or on Instagram at Creamy Handshakes.